All right, so this, uh, this is an issue that I first encountered about five years ago or so when I messed around with trying to implement pressure sensitive inlining. Uh, and at, at the time I, I, uh, I suppose I could switch to the, the, the later slide that this has, this has all of the, all the different issues, but, but what I discovered at, at the time is there's really, I mean, there's obviously for good reason, there's no, there's no concept of what is the register pressure in the middle end, but there are a bunch of things which we might want to do in the middle of the compiler, which it would be good to have some kind of analog to this to to guide us in terms of not doing stupid things. Now, at the time, people said, "Oh, the new register allocator will fix magically fix all of this, and uh, there won't be any problems." But uh, that isn't the case. So, I, I I think you you still need to pay attention to these things and not overwhelm the register allocator so that the I've listed a few things here um, inlining obviously you don't want to necessarily dump uh, you know one inline a function that's that's got a whole bunch of register pressure in the middle of another function that also had a whole bunch of register pressure because now you may have um, you may have a lot more spilling um, loop invariant code motion was something that Gufu brought up that um, uh, in in that case you may you may be moving something out of a loop uh, but doing that creates a you know creates a register that's going to a live range that's going to span the whole loop and it might actually be cheaper to rematerialize the value in some fashion inside the loop so that then you you don't have to maybe spill somewhere else in the loop. Um, another one of the areas is I've messed around with over the years is parallel reassociation, which is the idea that we have a you know a, an, an expression where you're adding up, you know, 15 things or something that instead of just serializing the whole thing, you split it into two or more chains that are parallel that are just added together or you know the, whatever the operation is that's done at the at the end and then you can you can make use of, of multiple functional units to to do the computation but the downside is is that it multiplies the number of of, of registers used in in evaluating the expression so uh, it's not a good idea to to do it if it's in the middle of of some loop that has a lot of register pressure as well, um, and then another obvious case is uh, is loop unrolling might want to be sensitive to this because if you 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 could you know go backwards by unrolling and then discovering that in order to get the unrolled loop you you have a whole bunch of spills. Um, the current only analog we have for this, I mean, the analog that we have for controlling things like inlining is uh, uh, is just looking at pure code size. But pure code size, there's there's a lot of you know differences between uh, things that could have the same the, the same number of ensigns, uh, um, but you know could have a small amount of register pressure or a lot of register pressure or just you know a small uh, amount of, of complexity in terms of uh, basically the number of interrelated uh, expressions in the code yeah and, and so it's not a it's not a it's not necessarily a good analog like uh, uh, like if you do a loop unrolling uh, by factor of n then you grow the number of registers needed by factor sort of well, uh, for other things, uh, like if you do inline, uh, you you grow you do grow the number of registers needed, but not so 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 quickly at all. Yeah, and while we we have the the tree SSA live module, the problem with using it in these kind of contexts is that it assumes that the that, that it could just scan the IL and get the data it needs, and 
by the time we reflect a loop unroll into the IL, you know, that, that's kind of too late. We want to know essentially if I if I unroll this loop, what's the register pressure going to look like? Am I increase it by a factor of two, or is it you know a, a small delta? And, and the tree SSA live module can't really deal with that kind of. Give me an analysis without actually reflecting it in the IL. Yeah, the, the actual enrolling is done on, on ITL level. Yeah, but that, so, so yeah, set that aside, call it inlining or, or lick them or whatever, you know, whatever transformations out there that we care about. But, but please let me finish. Uh, uh, at RTL level, we know about registers, but at, at three level, we, we, at Gimpo level, we do not really know about registers. No, but you, you use SSA names as a proxy. So do I, have, do I now have, at, at any hey. given point, five times more SSA names that are conflicting? Because that's what it, it computes. But that's not a very good proxy. It's a much better proxy than we got now, which is nothing. And, and much better. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it, yeah. It's an order of magnitude better, but the, the, the structure of Tree SSA Live is not amenable to the kind of analysis that I think we want to be doing here, in that it, it has to read the IL. And, and what we want to know is what is this transformation going to do to the pressure at, at, a, at given points? Yeah, so, one of, one of the issues of doing all this on, on SSA is that, that we don't really have any fixed schedule of the uh, SSA devs in, in, on Gimple because any, any estimate, like if you throw the uh, three SSA live on, on a basic block, it will compute something. But then at RTL expansion, we have uh, TER and it will produce yep. a completely different schedule with a completely different uh, register pressure characteristic. So it's absolutely, absolutely. And, and there's also, there was you know, the work from there several years ago to try and add a scheduler into that phase that never really went anywhere. But conceptually, TER is part of the problem here in that it, it can, as, as Richie says, it, it changes the schedule and can dramatically induce reg increase register pressure uh, as it builds these bigger expressions. Um, and, and that's really all a... A symptom of the problem that, that in the past, the the expanders had a fair amount of optimization smarts in them. And, and that was because, you know, this is pre-Gimple, pre-TreeSSA. Um, and so we wanted to create these big expressions that we could hand off to the expanders. Yeah, so to solve that particular problem, we've got to stop that. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I, I think... So yeah, I think... To, to, smart, and they're not actually very smart, actually degreed degrade code quality a lot. Expanders do way too much. Yeah, that's, so that's true. So, so I think two or three years ago, I, I, I looked at this, like after Bernd looked at this like five years ago, and I tried to turn uh, um, off the TRR or better reflect it on Gimple itself. But mm -hmm. then there's a lot of code quality regressions with not doing the smart expanders that are not so smart, but apparently they they have yeah. some smartness that is not there <laughs> otherwise. Right, def definitely. They, they do quite a bit of stuff that is not done anywhere later. Yeah. So, yeah. We so we, we, we've got to solve th that. That's one of the sub problems we have to solve here if we're going to really do this. But TER yeah. has to go, but we, has to, we have to solve the expander problem. Yeah. So, so what, what I don't actually understand from you, you, you said that the register pressure is, is a problem with inlining, but if you don't inline, you have to spill around the call. And if you yeah. inline, you, you can spill around the inlined block boundary in exactly the same way. So why is it increasing the spilling if you inline? Well, you could you can increase comic sub sub expression finding that, that that will increase register. There's ways it can happen. It's not a direct one to one okay. correlation. It's, it's, it's partition. It's partitioning the problem so that, that by not inlining, you're partitioning the problem, and the register allocator does not have to deal with the whole thing at one lump. It may do a better job in that case. Okay. So, but I think it does this right now. It's the partitioning into areas of loop loops, and so it, it's there, that, that's yes. one thing that should be fixed in the register in the allocator. So by partitioning the function into interesting regions, and, and not by not inlining, or but or even splitting at RTL level uh, some some code into sub function some functions, if if it if there is a good yeah. chance that it will improve the register allocation. 
Yeah, but yeah, so it, it, it's, it's just partitioning the function into regions, if you call that functions, okay. But yeah, making the register allocator work on regions in a better way than it does now. Yeah, well, the, you know, it's model right now is is it builds regions based on loop structure, and that may not always be the best structure for for these these scenarios. Um, so yeah, I agree, Richie, that that uh, having alternative ways of of, of partitioning the, the the IL is is probably part of the solution here as well. Yeah. So so, so what I was also thinking is uh, the, like the loop invariant motion, and in particular uh, the 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 load store motion. Which includes uh, the loop carried uh, registers. Uh, if if there's a way, if we just do it at, as aggressively as we do now, but uh, a way to undo parts of the harmful transforms before expanding to RTL, just in response to register pressure, to not lose like uh, vectorization, which absolutely requires uh, to have all the loop store motion applied, because it otherwise can't uh, vectorize reductions. Right, so so if there's a way to more intelligently undo the transforms, and instead of doing it by spilling by rematerialization, which I understand, some in theory a register allocator can also do the rematerialization, but of course it's much more difficult to see where to rematerialize from than like if we would try to do this on Gimple. Yeah. The register allocator can never create co good code if you overwhelm it. It, uh, it will go to reload, uh, it spills off, right? And that is never ever good code. It cannot be. It's correct code, that's what reload does. But it cannot be good code. So you really, you really have to make sure to, to not have too many pseudos or the diameter of code or whatever you want to call it. So I, I almost hesitate to, to mention it, but does this start to feel like another phase of lowering as we go from GIMPL to RTL? So, at, so in that phase, as, as we're moving RTL, we could start querying the back end. How many registers do you have? Oh, shit. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm asking for 193 live things at this point. You only have 32 registers. Well, that's clearly not going to work. Um, yeah, and it's not just how many registers you have. You know, you may only do one subset. For example, MIPS has the multiply instruction that Yeah, has I was thinking in terms of per register. class. And yeah, PowerPC is Altebec versus BSX registers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you have, you have to break it down into the chunks that are, that are useful and, and where things are likely going to end up. But the, the basic concept or the basic question I was starting to ask is, is, is a piece of this uh, an expansion problem where do, do we drive trying to split ranges or undo optimizations as part of the lowering phase as we go from GIMP to RTL? Does uh, that make sense? Those, we, we already do some of this. I think we have this uncopy prop, uh, propagation pass, which basically uh, tries, tries, to, tries to remove uh, <laughs> copies from constants on, on edges, right? Yeah, um, that was strictly a code size thing. I, I'd like to see that go away. I wrote it. It's it's not very nice. <laughs> um, well, but it's 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 effective. So and, and and we do have like in the out of SSA phase, we do have like also some tricks to to improve the the RTL expansion. And yes, so we are already doing some lowering. We are doing the the, the vectorized and cont expression stuff with the instruction selection and and uh, we are using more internal functions that directly map to our tabs so i think we are we are walking in the direction to do a lot of the rtl expansion on gimple itself and exposing like the the, the actual um the, the, the actual code via the internal functions and yes and and the, the important step when we want to have an, an estimate on register pressure is indeed to get rid of TER. So to have the magic that expand is doing right now be done on Gimple in some yep. way. And, and, and when I remember correctly, most of the regressions are in the area of expanding memory accesses, so bit field oh, really? access and stuff like that. Because there, uh, it's, it's like if you have 
um, like an add of of two bit extracts that gets magically combined into magic, and that's no longer happening if you if you just expand the bit extract, then the add, and then the other. So it's it does, yeah. So so uh, some of this stuff has to be done before actually expanding to RTL. Actually, uh, I would like to add that um, uh, global register locator have uh, no ocean regions. Uh, and uh, as you told, uh, uh, currently it's only loops, but it can be easily extended to other regions. Uh, the only requirement that the regions should be nested, and that's it. So. Maybe somebody could pick up uh, this project and do this. Another problem with uh, still you uh, can uh, split on uh, uh, on uh, region borders, but you cannot, for example, move uh, or rematerialize instruction in uh, in the region. There is rematerialization. It's in. Uh, the local register locator, but it's very constrained uh, pass because we already uh, assigned register. And uh, uh, when you have pseudo register, rematerialization would uh, work much better. Actually, I remember I implemented before the new register locator uh, the second part of. Uh, uh, Simpson thesis about uh, global value numbering uh, and uh, second part is about uh, rematerialization how to do rematerialization on SSA level to decrease register pressure so uh, this could be uh, done in uh, the middle end I guess and that time it, it gave a one percent improvement uh, on spec uh, spec in 2000. So again, uh, register materialization in uh, uh, register locator is very constrained, and there is few chances uh, to make rematerialization, and it's better to do this uh, before uh, assigning registers. So that's uh, uh, my proposal. So when you say this should be done in the middle end, do you mean uh, at Gimbal or uh, at expand time? It could be done uh, on RTL level, it could be done on SSA level. It's better to do this on SSA level. Actually, Simpson thesis was uh, all about SSA. Uh, it's easier to do this. Uh, optimization on SSA level. The problem is uh, again how to evaluate register pressure. Uh, well, and that's why I was leaning towards that that Gimple to SSA or sorry Gimple to RTL border, because that is a fine time to introduce the concept of register pressure based on what the target you know based on the target register set. I don't think we want to try to do that earlier because. If you want to do it at expand time, you need to make uh, more sub passes uh, at expand time. We actually already need that. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's already a requirement. <laughs> yeah, but 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 this would be a really good excuse to start doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree, Sucker. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, I, I explicitly talked uh, uh, Martin into. Naming the the cont expression expansion pass gimbal instruction selection um, <laughs> because that should be the kitchen sink to move the magic of expand to so that expand really can just be the dump gimbal to uh, RTL right. expander via optops and yeah it, it should be just a very simple lowering yeah. you know, what yeah. we're doing in that expansion phase is way too complex. Right, it it will stay very complex because it's 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 very much uh, it's it's very, it's very big impedance mismatch between gimbal and I. So it will stay complex, but it doesn't have to do all these extra things that it. Yeah. Have. 
Right. I think I think we need to evaluate all those extra things and start moving them either in, into the Gimple SSA optimizers, which I think that's where probably most of them want to live. Um, there may be some that move into the RTL space, but I think most move in, into, into the Gimple stage. And what's left is really a lowering phase as opposed to an optimization and lowering. Yeah. So, so, so it, 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 if you want to do an experiment, you can just turn off TR completely and then look at the test suite and you will see test cases that will start failing because we don't optimize them anymore and then see what is necessary to, to recover the expand mm -hmm. magic in a lowering phase that happens before RTL expansion. Yep, that would be the exact way I would start that. And I always wanted to do that and just never found the time. It's quite a big task, at least to get to a point where we can really disable TR. Yeah, I, I'm sure it, it's it's going to be the case where you know somebody spends a year on this, you know, just finding all those dusty corners that we've ignored for the last two decades. But that that's really what's happened here. Is it, that code is two plus decades old? We we had never went back and really revamped it. Yeah. Uh, when so we introduce SSA. So the, so the good thing is that we now have the path that runs over the whole IL before RTL expansion, just for the cont expressions. And you can just add to that. And it's not that you have a, a patch that just looks for one very special case and doing an extra IL walk, because you can just piggyback back on, on the existing one. So there's no excuse to not do it. <laughs> well, the excuse is time. <laughs> Of course, of course. <laughs> well, one, one issue I'll, I'll mention though is is even at expand time, and actually even even during register allocation, we don't have uh, exact register pressure counts uh, with True. like union register classes and that. Uh, it, the problem is because we don't do instruction selection until during register allocation. Uh, so we don't know whether some pseudo is going to end up in a GPR or an FPR or vector register sometimes, you know, that has these large kind of union register classes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think a, a lot of this, at least in my mind, is trying to catch the pathological cases where the Gimple SSA optimizers are giving the, the back end uh, code that has pressure that is so high that there's not going to be a way to allocate without spilling. I'm trying to, yeah, to deal with the pathological cases as opposed to, uh, you know, kind of squeezing out the last bit of performance because we do have a lot of pathological cases still. Yeah, as I understand, expander only uh, increases register pressure. So if you can evaluate uh, register pressure uh, in uh, before expander and it's high, you, you need to do this in any way, even if expander is ideal and will not increase pressure. So, if you can avoid the pathological cases, it gives us more latitude to be a little bit more aggressive in some of the other tunings of the, yes. of the compiler, because we're not so worried about keeping from just catastrophically bad performance in those cases. Exactly. Yeah, the, the problem with uh, register classes also that uh, we have a lot of architectures with regular classes. Uh, so uh, global register allocator is trying to do some approximation and build uh, uh, register classes uh, non-intersected. It's called uh, pressure register classes. And this is uh, these classes are used in uh, register pressure sensitive uh, optimization in RTL. Uh, RTL, it's uh, uh, instruction scheduling and uh, loop invariant motion mostly. And uh, still it, it working. So uh, it's still improving code, although the approximation is not exact. You, you will never have exact approximation of register pressure when you have uh, Regal uh, register files in your target architecture. Yeah, but it it shouldn't be too hard to to not be off by a factor of two or more, which we actually are now. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, approximation is still working, and uh, before the new register allocator, we have we 
had no at all uh, register pressure evaluation. And when I implemented the new register locator and implemented this infrastructure for approximate evaluation of register pressure, it uh, became used in a uh, uh, couple optimization, like, uh, as I told, uh, instruction scheduling and uh, uh, RTL loop invariant motion. So to, to have something is better than nothing. Sure, yes, yes. <laughs> There so we've, we've kind of taken over this. Aaron, are, 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 are you getting what you want out of this? Oh, oh absolutely. There's, this, is okay. a, this is a ton of engagement, and we're headed in the right direction, which is discussing, you, you know, some, some things which are going are gonna to help this problem generally, I think. Okay, I just want to make sure that, that you didn't have uh, other aspects of this you wanted to, to dive into. So we, we can keep going. It's fine with me. <laughs> No, I mean the way the way I see what has happened here is is that, you know, I I had an idea of well let's have some infrastructure to figure this out in in I think what we have actually come here is that, well maybe some of what we actually do at expand could should be done earlier and and that is maybe even better. It, it's a it's I think it's a prerequisite to, to solving the problem you're trying to solve. At least that, that'd be my position. So there's, there's definitely like uh, places on, on Gimple optimizers like the loop invariant and store motion where we could use very, very simple heuristics like ask the target how many integer or floating point registers you have and not uh, create like oh, 200 loop carried register dependence. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's something yeah. what we currently don't do, which we can easily do either just very stupidly by a new param, never generate more than 20, and if PowerPC thinks 30, then, well, they can change it to 30. Or just, I, I guess it must be available, like the, the size of the register classes must be accessible somewhere, even on Gimple. Uh, so to, to use those as... But, but yeah, I, said, I mean, it, it, it can happen that in other pathological cases, you then fail to vectorize, which, which would have reduced the register pressure by a factor of 16 again, because it was all character, you carried dependencies, and they would all fit in a register, in a, in a vector register. So yeah. there's always downsides to these kind of heuristics when you apply them too early. Uh, actually, uh, sorry, Sarah. Uh, yeah, uh, when, whenever you factorize something, it ends up in different registers. Uh, and all of our factor registers are the same registers, so the rest of the mode class at all anymore. Uh, I should say that uh, there is already some uh, uh, approximation in building uh, non intersected uh, register classes in the uh, global register locator which can be used for register pressure uh, uh, calculations. It's called uh, uh, reg uh, pressure classes, I guess, uh, if you look at uh, uh, into the global register locator, you will find this. It doesn't depend on... Uh, uh, that is the one that targets can set directly, right? Yeah, it's from... Um, it's calculated from uh, machine... Uh, dependent descriptions. So you just need now to uh, make uh, uh, a map or correspondence between uh, this given pseudo class, pseudo register to uh, given uh, pressure register, pressure register class, and uh, you can calculate. And you know how many register you have in pressure register class and you will see is there is uh, register pressure access and you need to do something with this. Uh, but uh, how to make uh, correspondence between the 
register pressure class uh, uh, from uh, pseudo given pseudo to register pressure class it's uh, it's uh, uh, another issue I, I guess it could be done only by uh, mode of uh, uh, pseudo register For the parallel rail association, uh, wouldn't a possible solution be try to undo it at uh, at RTL time after computing the uh, the, the pressure? Uh, because undoing what what the rail association did and trying to serialize it, uh, if if the pressure is high, should be that hard. Yeah, I think that one's relatively straightforward conceptually, and I think the, the loop invariant code motion is relatively straightforward because when we do uh, loop invariant code motion, we're essentially creating um, conflicts for the entire duration of the loop. So if we create 200 invariants for one loop, we just created 200 con conflicting objects for the entire duration of that loop. So, so I think those two are kind of simpler to understand how, um, how or where we put you know, our, our, our tweaks. The, the inlining one, I think, is a lot tougher. Um, just because it, it's much harder pr to predict how inlining is going to affect the pressure problem. Yeah. Uh, uh, quite often inlining reduces the pressure. Often it would. I, I just think it's a, lot, it's a lot harder to predict. Whereas predicting Lickham or, or understanding how to undo um, uh, reductions or, or reassociation, that stuff. I think we 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 know how to do that. That's easier. It's it's easier to analyze. It's easier to rewrite. Inlining, I don't have a solution for. Uh, I I wouldn't even think about inlining before tackling all the other issues. You're probably right, Richie. <laughs> See yes. where we are after we tackle the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, or, or if if you want to tackle that, try to to look at what uh, Vlad said and extend the kind of regions uh, the, the global register allocator forms into yeah, some the re yeah the region seems like a good like a good idea there like it, it, i mean right now we do loops right but what if you what if you identified strongly connected components or something like that and tried to partition things if if it, it, into into pieces like that yeah yeah, I, I think regions probably would, would really help in the allocator. The thing I would caution against, um, I, I had a long discussion with the SGI guys many years ago, and they were in the process of trying to as soon as take their tire back in and make it region-based. And they worked on that for like five years and never got it to work. <laughs> um, so I, I could see us doing it in a, in a much more constrained form. We are going to focus on the allocator and do it there. But I wouldn't suggest we try to plumb that all the way through because I think we'll, sit, we'll end the same boat there they ended up in. We'll spend a lot of time and never actually get it working. Yeah, well, uh, building new regions uh, solves uh, uh, register leaf splitting problem, but it, it doesn't solve, for example, uh, aromatization problem. Mm -hmm. uh, as, I, as I told, uh, we have uh, uh, rematerialization uh, it's uh, in a local register allocator, but it has very constrained conditions uh, to work because uh, we already assigned all uh, register and we cannot move uh, this particular instruction through uh, instruction which uses the same registers, so Thank hard you. registers. So uh, I guess uh, at least register materialization should be done before uh, uh, register allocated. Where it could be done in uh, in the middle end, or it could be done uh, right before register allocator. But I, I, I think history would tell us we'll end, we'll end up with both. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be done in both. Yeah, the, the same with like uh, loop invariant code motion. We have it uh, in uh, in the middle end and uh, on RTL level. But on the RTL level, we uh, have uh, register pressure sensitive loop invariant code motion, but not in uh, in the middle end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, 
you yeah, the, 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 the scheduler. I mean, the, the first uh, scheduling pass, I'm, I'm always thinking that one can do, could do a lot more things. I'm not yes. sure if, if anybody ever did rematerialization within the scheduler. Uh, I don't know, Richard, I don't think so. Uh, register, uh, instruction scheduler is so complicated, so I don't think so. But, but uh, register allocation is even more complicated. Well, I, I think uh, th there's a lot of pieces of the scheduler that can help us, I, you know, like all, all the dependency analysis, for example. Um, so I, I wouldn't necessarily try to do it within the scheduler as written, but I think there are pieces of the scheduler that we could carve out and say, this is generic enough to allow us to build around it. Um, yeah. the, the other question you had is, has anybody ever tried it in the scheduler? I don't think anybody's ever done material, rematerialization in the scheduler. I'm not, I'm not aware of anybody ever experimenting there. Yeah, it's not with, the, our, with our tools. If you the, the, main, the main purpose of schedule is move instruction, not, not to rematerialize this. So I don't think so. It's it's uh, complicated uh, the current instruction scheduler. Even if you look at uh, uh, scheduler uh, from uh, Institute of System Programming of Russian Academy, it's even more complicated. Mm -hmm. So if if you want to change anything in Sketch One, the first thing you should do is uh, um, uh, make it uh, uh, select which variant of instruction to use. Because it it matters more than anything else. Yeah, our our longstanding instruction selection problem. Right. Yeah, I forgot. We actually have a modular scheduling tool, and it's uh, register pressure sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> no, no, nobody use use it, unfortunately. It doesn't, and, it doesn't work very well, and that's yeah because yeah. no one uses it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, because it's doing uh, a bad job, yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, again, it doesn't have the information that it needs. The problem is that it doesn't have the actual um, you know, final selection of instructions to be able to create the optimal uh, schedule. Yep. Yeah, that, yeah, this is a, a specific problem of GCC because we... Yes, yes. Yeah, we, we have a special machine description which uh, forces us to uh, use uh, instruction selection. Uh, yeah, yeah, to this, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but on the other hand, uh, as uh, it was discussed recently, it makes uh, uh, passes after register allocator is uh, much simpler. Then, for example, in then in LLVM, when in LLVM you choose a, a particular instruction alternatives, and after assigning uh, registers, it uh, it's different. You need to do a lot of uh, a lot of work to fix this code, and it's uh, it's hard to formalize. So th there are some cons and. Uh, a pros for uh, uh, GCC approach. So I've been keeping notes in in the shared note space. I don't know if I captured everything. If there are other ideas that we want to try to, you know, in addition to the great you know summary that Aaron already created here, you know, questions. Yeah, five minutes left. There is one question raised by Chip. I don't think we've answered yet. Yeah, so, so um, I, I was always, I'm actually like since a few years looking for a place to introduce AI into GCC. Um, but I, I, I didn't think about uh, register pressure, but but uh, about the, the splitting of the function into regions for, for uh, the register allocator. We could throw an AI on that because that's it's probably going to be a bunch of heuristics or just use the strongly connected components. But that's basically what we're doing right now with the loops. I am pretty skeptical about using 
artificial intelligence in the compiler field. <laughs> that's that, that's my just my opinion. Yeah, yeah you yeah, know, a whole, we, we had topic, a whole other research yeah, topic. Yeah, we, we had uh, 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 what is called post uh, mile uh, uh, project uh, from uh, Friends Academy in Rio. And uh, it uh, gave nothing actually, and they just uh, trans. This project was transformed to collecting uh, uh, test samples and uh, uh, how these test samples behaves when uh, different uh, set of options are used. So. Uh, I don't see that artificial intelligence uh, works uh, well in uh, compiler field. It's 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 different uh, uh, problem, I guess. It's not uh, computer vision or something. It's very very non-smooth uh, uh, function minimization, and uh, when uh, and it doesn't work. Uh, for uh, compiler field. Actually, I, I tried to use myself uh, artificial intelligence approaches uh, many times for GCC and always it work. Uh, it didn't work. Well, at, at least some of the issues look like pattern recognition to me, like splitting a function into allocation regions. It looks like pattern recognition. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, I think you know maybe in the constrained environment that we're talking about, there might be something there, Richie. I, I kind of like my other comment. I would I would recommend against trying to solve the bigger problem with AI. I, I know Uli was looking at this, Uli Trepper, and it went nowhere. <laughs> but in a constrained thing, how do we partition for the red shell here? That might be small enough that that it's worth an experiment. At least it would be cool, right, to have a production compiler <laughs> using AI. Yeah. Well, but I think there, there are some heuristics to think about in that space. You know, there, there's strong kinetic components, there's loops, there's hot and cold code. There, there are things to look at there. Yeah, um, sure. But, but we're, you know, which ones are important? I only think we really know which ones yeah. will, will end up, would end up being important. For example, switch statements also, where one, one, one thing of the switch uses lots of registers and Everything else doesn't use much. Mm -hmm. Pearl Bench and CPU 2017. All the irony. I'm looking at Pearl Bench right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my screen. <laughs> Bill raised a hand. Bill, do you have a question? Bill Schmidt. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yes. My mic wasn't yes. working. I apologize. I have a request. Uh, this has been a really excellent exchange of views. I would hate for this to get lost. Could we um, see some of this discussion put out on the wiki and a pointer to it put in the GCC mailing list and people can go out there and continue the discussion? Um, or is there a better way for this to, to, to move ahead? I, I think we, I we, think we want to capture it, it certainly. And, and I think David has, has at least got a capture of the discussion, so we just need to move that out into a more public place. Yeah. Let's just make sure we don't lose it, because I think this was a really, really good topic and a really good uh, discussion here. Thanks.